Hello and welcome to For the Love of Truth. I'm called Adrian. This is episode 262 and I'm calling this one As Man or Woman, You Are Not a Person. A comment was left recently on a video I created and I thought it was worth sharing with you. One of the most important things that you and I can do, I think, is share information and thoughts with each other so we're better able to know where we are and what is afoot in this mixed-up, inverted reality where up is down, left is right, and backwards is forwards, to name but a few, where we're often encouraged to shoot down any messenger and ignore the message, which can be a foolish thing to do. In that process of gathering our thoughts and sharing, I've found it so helpful to also listen with an open mind and heart, and then apply my own logic and discernment to see how the information shared fits with me. I'll read you the comment, and I'm going to add some comments and a few thoughts of my own for clarification. Now, I will, if I'm making a big insert, let you know I've done that. Other times I may just add a few words or change a couple of things. So what I'm going to do is put a transcript of this podcast onto the webpage for this episode, and a link will be in the description. And on that transcript, the things I've added are in brown, and Peter's words are in black. If the information in this podcast is new to you, might I encourage you to set aside some time to do some digging to define your own powerful questions and use your own discernment. This is from a man called Peter. And please note, I did not say this is from a person named Peter, for things have names. Knowing the definition and the meaning of words is vital, so you don't go through life babbling. For instance, most people don't understand the difference between being a man or woman as opposed to being a person, especially when in court. When God has no respect for any persons, as written in the King James Bible in Acts 10, 34, 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. The Creator gave you unalienable, immutable rights as man. Then of your own free will, you contract with the state and then don't know how to respond because of a poor education system. You don't even know that you can either be the creditor of the trust or the debtor of the trust. Sester K Trust, Sester K V Act, 1666, UK. I'm going to add something here. It's interesting to note that the Great Fire of London, listed in Wikipedia as sweeping through London from Sunday the 2nd of September through Thursday the 6th of September, 1666, and was, if you care to do some digging, used to start this capture of your soul, the creation of the Sester K Trusts, your straw man, your person, convincing you that you are your legal fiction, and thus your enslavement. All acts apply to persons, and please remember this for what comes later on inclusion. A little more on the Act. London, in 1666, during the Black Plague and Great Fires of London, Parliament enacted an act behind closed doors called Sester K. V. Act 1666. The act being debated was to subrogate, meaning to substitute one thing for another, the rights of men and women, meaning all men and women, were declared dead, lost at sea, beyond the sea, without proof that they were, so no body, no corpse, no witnesses. The state, London, took custody of everybody and their property into a trust. The state became the trustee, stroke husband, holding all titles to the people and property until a living man comes back to reclaim those titles. He can also claim damages. And of course, if you don't know about this, and why would you, then you won't take any action. When capital letters are used anywhere in a name, they always refer to a legal entity, stroke fiction, company or corporation. There are no exceptions. For example, John, all capitals Doe, or Doe, colon, all capitals Jane. Fictions have no consciousness. They are dead. And perhaps this is why names on tombstones are all in capital letters. Anyway, back to Peter's comments. So why does the Creator not respect any person? Well, if you don't know the definition of the meaning of words you use, then you are just babbling. Person, noun, directly from the Latin persona, defined as human being, person, personage, a part in a drama, an assumed character, originally a mask, a false face such as those of wood or clay covering the whole head worn by actors in later Roman theatre. So that if you move away from the Creator and follow man-made laws, they are your new God, and that is an abomination. Why don't you all wake up and stop allowing this, allowing them to put you in a box of your own making? 
If you will just think outside of the box, you will set yourself free. For the box that they have put you into is your own mind, because they tell you what to think and how. Yet the Creator expects you to think for yourself. That's why when people are summoned to court, in the all caps lettering, they think it's them, all because they don't know English grammar. The summons is written in sign language, and not English, an irrefutable truth. You will not find anything about it in the Oxford Manual of Styles of English, but in the Maxim of Law in Latin, and forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, expressio unius est exclusio alterius, which translates into English as, the expression of one thing is the exclusion of the other. And I'll add here that that is something you might want to etch into your mind. Here is one reason that it is so important for you to know. If the word man stroke woman is not included in the definition of the word person, then it means it is excluded. So, you can't walk into their court as man stroke woman when you answer for the legal fiction, your person, because you have no standing stroke right of audience, and they only want you to act as the person, the legal fiction, so they can access your trust account and get paid. And I shall add here, this is why in court they ask you to state your name for the record. I said that all caps lettering is sign language, as it tells us in the Chicago Manual Style of English on pages 664, 665, and 666. 664, ASL, American Sign Language, the language of the deaf and mute to communicate. 665, the language of the illiterate who cannot read instructions, so you can give them directions by using signs, arrows, symbols, pictures, etc. 666, the language of the corporation, by becoming a corporate person. And as a side note here from me, corporation equals corpse oration, a dead thing speaking. The fix is a long time in the making, and time is short. You are being tested. The power of letters, as in words, is very important, but only if you understand the definitions and the meaning of them. Why do the police say, I'm not going to argue? It's because they have no indemnity against harming a man-stroke woman. Likewise, why would you argue with an actor, person, who is just playing their role and getting paid for it? It is madness. So that was the end of the first comment, and I thanked him for the comment and asked him if I could use the content to make a mini-podcast, and his response is as follows. Yes, as you can see, my grammar isn't perfect because of my hearing all my life, and I always thought it was to my disadvantage. But as I get older, I always pondered why I'm seeing and hearing things differently from most other people. Now I know it's a godsend. He's using people in a whole variety of ways, so if you understand what I've written, I can add to it. The way the legal system works and dates back to, ask yourself, do you really want justice? And most people would say, yes, of course, I demand justice. I would say, be careful what you wish for. By demanding justice, you might just get it, not realizing what exactly that justice is or means. The first Roman emperor was Augustus, 27 BC to 14 AD, who worshipped the goddess Justitia, who mimicked the Greek goddess Dyke. We know what that is a euphemism for, and that is why the goddess Justitia was put alongside the goddess Prudentia. When Augustus died, his son Tiberius built temples for her. Is it just coincidental that it was at the time of the Messiah, as foretold in the scriptures? Do the temples exist today? The British Empire covered 25% of the landmass, leaving behind its language and legal system. If you were to enter one of those courts, you would see somebody in a robe and a wig presiding over, sitting there in place of Lady Justice, a man impersonating a woman, and not sitting there as a white sage like Samuel in the Book of Samuel. So who is, or was, Lady Justice if not the goddess Justitia, an abomination replacing the father of creation? Replacing the father, who's a man, with a woman who clearly is not real, living, not only a woman, but a false deity, made of stone. It is done to take you away from the father and his laws to be replaced with a false deity and her legal system, which requires consent, so the system will tell you. Yet this doesn't stop the system from pulling you in by the police. When you are in the legal system, you can guarantee you are there to answer for the corporate person you say is you, without understanding you are not answering for the man-stroke woman as the man-stroke woman. Why? Because they, the courts, the police and so on, didn't create the man or woman, and so can never allow you, as the man or woman, to go on the record, and that presiding judge allows what he wants and not what you say at your first hearing. 
That's to see if you are going to conform to what they need, so they can access your SESTA-K Trust, SESTA-K V Act 1666. You should never answer for the legal fiction. As soon as you do, by getting a solicitor, they will recommend a barrister and they will simply say what your argument is. And I'll add here, the solicitor or barrister represent your person, thus you are not presenting yourself as man or woman. Well, you should never argue unless you are arguing with another man or woman. And I'll add here that asking as king questions is the answer. Questions are critical. Questions will reveal the truth, and the truth must come out of the mouths of others, out of witnesses. Also, when you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God, are you not then confirming yourself as a liar? Be careful now. If you say no, then you tripped yourself up and missed the trickery. No one can know the truth. You can only know your truth. When the police say, I'm not going to argue with you, they can't argue because they are a person acting, and you are a man, and that's different jurisdictions. So it's a mixed war. But once you show them the government identification, they have authority over you, with your consent, and they will keep you talking until they get jurisdiction. I'm adding here, it's how they are trained, asking you for your name and date of birth. And whilst we've not covered this here, your birth certificate, a maritime phrase, since as a boy or a girl you were born, not birthed, you are not a vessel. Your birthing certificate refers to the creation of your straw man, your legal fiction, your person. After you were born and your parents were duped, tricked, harassed, conned into giving you away to the state and into the slave system. Once they have jurisdiction, they will offer free of charge a duty solicitor. They charge that to your SESTA-K trust. After all, they give you nothing for free, even if you don't know about the trust. That's why you are charged with a crime. In the SESTA-K trust, you are a creditor, as the man stroke woman, or a debtor, as the person. You have free will to choose. Now you might want to look deeper into trustees and beneficiaries, and who is what in the courtroom. But when you are sent a summons, which is an invitation to the person to a business meeting, it will never have your name first, never, and if, like me, you send them back by covering up the window and returning it back, normally it will have a return address for them to do so, and they will try three times, just as in the denial of Peter, when the Messiah said in Matthew twenty six sixty nine seventy five, and Peter remembered Jesus' words, which said to him, before the rooster crows three times this night, you will deny ever knowing me. If you do that, they will get a police officer to serve you three times. Then if you send them back, they will arrest you. But people never ask to see the summons. And why should they? There isn't one. And if there was, it will be in the legal fiction, not conforming to correct English grammar, so is actually saying nothing, unless you give it life to exist, all because you don't know correct English grammar or were never taught correctly by a poor education. The police will say it's in the court and they have it, yet they haven't even got a copy of it. A summons is supposed to be under oath. Well, that can't be done. For a person, that is the corporate name written down on paper, and you cannot arrest black ink writing on a piece of paper unless some fool answers to it. And I'm going to add here that the education system is a fundamental part of this hoax, this bait-and-switch, which is an intentional part of their indoctrination system. They own and control the education system, but you pay for it. It's a prudent thing to consider that everything you have been taught in this corrupt and inverted world is a lie, and that by asking your own questions and making your own lines of inquiry, by utilising your discernment and logical analysis and reasoning, you will be able to learn how things really work. People are put under pressure for a whole variety of reasons and concede, and concede jurisdiction. Whoever leaves the battlefield first loses by default, so you would do well to learn how to stand your ground. They are using your own mind against you. If someone, a man or woman, is not giving their word that you have done them wrong, it is nothing but fiction, a yarn, a story, a tale. Men and women write affidavits of truth, and these can only be rebutted point for point by affidavits of truth from other men and women. Persons cannot respond. Persons and other fictions can only make statements. Revelations 2.10 Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And what follows is part three, in other words, his third comment. 
I would say to anyone, knowledge is power. Check and research what anyone tells. Always live truth and never seek justice when you know where the roots of the words we use come from. Most people speak without thinking. At times we speak differently to different people for a whole variety of reasons. For instance, a baby, small child, teenager, people we know, people we don't know, a school friend you haven't seen since school. But most important, be aware of people who are acting, a person, especially when they could or will misconstrue what you are saying to their advantage because they will use different dictionaries, English, etymology, law, etc. Persons who do this for profit, especially the police, courts, CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, and any government corporation or affiliate, are as bad, or I would say worse, than a thief, because they must be without the Lord in their hearts. This is why we should live with and in truth at all times and never deceive anyone. It is strange how we live with good intent, and those who are supposed to serve us will take advantage. Indeed, those who supposedly serve us are not supposed to tell us what to do. By this very errant behaviour, they are demonstrating that they do not serve us, and instead they serve another master. Watch carefully what people acting as persons actually do, not just listen to what they say. Yet the Messiah said, The greatest amongst you should be your greatest servant. If people falter, they should be helped in any way possible, as we are not perfect, as we exist in this corrupt world with the weak falling under the spell of the fallen one who challenged the Creator. There's a word I just used, spell. Used as a noun, the term spell is generally used for magical procedures which cause harm or force people to do something against their will. In general terms, the belief underlying the use of spells is that the wish that they embody will be fulfilled regardless of its goodness or badness so long as the formula has been correctly pronounced. Broadly speaking then, spells and prayer, like magic and religion to which they severally belong, can be distinguished by the nature of the intended purpose. By the way, have you ever wondered then why it is that we are taught spelling and how to spell at such an early age? Another thing I was going to tell you about is that most people don't realize everything is a contract without realizing that it's true, especially when they sign a document without reserving their rights. In other words, they don't know the difference between a signature and autograph. Well, signature, as in sign, sign at your, at the beginning of it, so that tells me it's not in English, it's a sign language written as a brush mark stroke scribble. Whereas an autograph is written in English, as I will show you. If your name was John Paul Smith, the correct way would be to do it this way. Colon, John hyphen Paul, colon Smith, full stop, then a, B-E-N-E, comma, open quote, without prejudice, close quote. The colon, before and after your given names, divide the sentence, along with a hyphen. Then the trust name is not a surname. Bene, an abbreviation for the word beneficiary. Without prejudice, in quotes, in law, without detriment to any existing right or claim. If you're a Christian, to be in the book of life, you should know your own name, and it will never be written in any other format that was made by a government. That would be an abomination. Just like legal and law, that would be mixed war and there's only one truth. It is all in the words. Just look at the legalese words. Evidence, surname, etc. Evidence, noun, circa 1300. Appearance from which inferences may be drawn. So it depends on who controls the narrative. And legal persons, like judges, CPS and barristers, are wordsmiths on the different dictionaries they use. If you don't know what dictionary they are using, and in what context, using what synonym they are using, and the meaning of that word, and so on again with that word, etc. I will add here, if you are writing your own agreements, and you should, a note agreements are between men and women, contracts are between persons, fictions. You would do well to include your own dictionary of words so there can be no confusion. Sir, S-U-R, word forming element meaning over, above, beyond, in addition, especially in words from Anglo-French and Old French. Let's take a look at the language of France, as many local languages are or were spoken there in the past and with different dialects. By the ordinance of villers Cotterets, I don't know if I pronounced that right, V-I-L-L-E-R-S-C-O-T-T-E-R-E-T-S, in 1539, King Francis I made French the official language of administration and court proceedings in France, which ousted Latin, which had been used early, 
and is a Romance's language, meaning that it descended primarily from Vulgar Latin, that specifically is classified under the Gallo-Romance language. France, Gaul, G-A-U-L, had been invaded in the 3rd century by German tribes and the most important groups are the Franks. Well, different parts of France spoke different languages. French was encouraged to be more widely taught and spoken until the 1880s, then it wasn't the national language until under the Constitution of France, and French has been the official language of the Republic since 1992, although the ordinance of Villas Cotterets made it mandatory for legal documents in 1539. So if you control the language, you control the country, just like the British with their empire, which covered 25% of the landmass. The countries still use English in their legal system until this day. And that's why, even though we have a direct root in Latin, a lot comes through French words that are rooted in Latin. All our much older words, gathered from other sources, have been deleted and eradicated as if they never existed from the books, just as French has taken over France, with children not speaking what I would call their native language. Just look at the Welsh language. Only 20% of the population speak it, and then indicated that 54% of the Welsh speakers aged three or older speak Welsh daily, 17% speak Welsh weekly, 24% speak Welsh less often, and 5% never speak Welsh out of the 20% who speak it. It is most important to know who, and when you are speaking to people from a government affiliate, that you are not condemning yourself by misconstruing, or it is best to keep your mouth shut, especially with the police, as it will always be used against you and never for you. After all, why would they? They are a commercial business, trading for profit, A business like any other corporation, they are after your money. Then he finishes with this, King James Bible, Amos 8, 11, 13. 11. Behold, the day came, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. 13. In that day shall fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Peter, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to create the comments and share them with me, with us. I'll leave you to dig into this further, if you're so inclined, to ponder this, to let it float around in your mind and your heart, and to share it with others as you see fit. And as always, you are amazing, and I'm looking forward to our next discussion. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.